Just because. Okay. Because you want to. Because because. There you go. Because you want to. Because because. because. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord, Church. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I I don't feel a shouting anointing tonight, but I feel just a nice, gentle spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And uh, you know, some some that's just as good as the other. Sometimes, ain't it? Amen. Uh, I entitled this message, Stone Pots or Clay Pots? You mean Stone Pots or Clay Pots? And we're going to be in the second chapter of John. The second chapter of John. You know, this is this is the story of Jesus' first miracle of water into wine. Amen. And uh, we're going to read the first 11 verses. It says, On the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they went... They wanted wine. Mother Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there was yet set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the feast, the, gov, the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men are well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou kept the good wine until now. The beginning of miracles did Jesus in, in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Amen. You know, we, we've mentioned before that every detail in the scripture is not, it's there all for a reasoning, and there's, and there's, there's something to be learned by every detail, every level. So deal, deal. You know, in, in the Bible, we, you know, in, uh, in the Western world, we start our week usually on Sunday, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In biblical times, they started their, their days on Sunday. So the third day of the week would be Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And, uh, there's a tradition, and you don't see it much in Israel anymore in modern times, but, but through most, most of the biblical days, and even past that, there's a tradition where they like to marry on Tuesdays. And, uh, and, and you see that here, they're, married, they're being married on the third day, which is a Tuesday. And the reason they did that is they go to Genesis 1, and every day that God of creation, God created something, he said, this is good, I mean, it's good. But on the third day, God blessed it twice. I mean, he, he said it was good twice. So the Jewish people saw, found that, and they saw that, and they thought, well, you know, I want our marriage to be double blessed. So they started having their weddings on Tuesday, and it became a very wide tradition, even in Israel. And this was very, very much so at the time of Jesus. Weddings were normally most of the time on Tuesdays. Now, in our Western world, we very rarely see a wedding on Tuesdays, do we? But it just so happens, next month I'm going up to Lake Erie to do a wedding, on a Tuesday, <laughs> Amen. and at the time I did this research, this uh, I didn't I didn't really know that fact, so I'm finding it ironic that I'm going to do a wedding on Tuesday coming up, Amen. But they, they you know they, they found that practice and it became common. But it says here that they was in Cana of Galilee. Now Galilee, you know, it was like a region or a province of Israel, okay, and it was a, it was a northern one of the northern provinces, and it was broken up into an upper and a lower section. And uh, uh, Nazareth was, was in the lower section of, of that, okay? And Canaan was just across the border into the northern section. But we know that in Luke 2, we know that, that at, the at the time of this miracle, that Jesus' mother and father were living in Nazareth. They were living in Nazareth at the time. And uh, from Nazareth to Cana was just a little over three miles. So it was easy, easy walk from Nazareth to Canaan, to Cana, okay? And, you know, at the time, uh, weddings in Israel, were, they were a community affair. The whole community would come out to a wedding. You didn't just have a little wedding when you met with a few family and friends. It was a community-wide thing. And sometimes even more than one community would come. Like in this case here, where you had two communities very close, it was very likely that you'd have, you know, people from both communities there. And then we know in verse 1 it says that Mary was there, right? Mary was there. In verse 2 says that Jesus and his disciples were there. And in verse 12 it hints that Jesus' siblings were there. Because right afterwards, I'm going to read verse 12. It says, right after this, 
it says that they went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. So it would, but, and definitely, you know, at the time Jesus did have, we know from Luke that Jesus did have siblings, okay? Mary and Joseph afterward, they had more children, okay? Yeah. So at this time, Jesus was an adult, so obviously he had, he had grown, grown adult brothers and sisters, amen? We, the scripture just doesn't really mention, other than James is the only brother that they mentioned by name that I know of. Okay. So, so probably uh, Jesus' sibling, and it's possible, we don't know because the scriptures don't say, but it might have even been a wedding of one of Jesus' siblings. We don't know. We just don't know. But a Jewish wedding, a after the wedding, it was a seven-day feast. Amen. And they know how to throw a wedding, don't they, in, in, in Israel. But it was seven days of eating and drinking, amen. And if you've ever been to a Jewish feast, you know, amen, Jewish people love to eat, amen. And actually, some of them even love to drink, even. But certainly, they love to eat. But at this time, amen, a, a Jewish wedding was seven-day feast, amen. It was seven days of eating and seven days of drinking. That's a lot of food, and it was a lot of booze. And I mean, know that, you know, it was traditional. They would bring out the best liquor first. They'd bring out the best wine first. Now, any of you that have ever partook in, in alcohol in your life, or, you know, in your younger years, what's the best wine? Was it the wine that was bottled yesterday, or was it the, blind, the wine that was bottled 30 years ago? Okay, the best tasting wine, you know, if, if, if people that are into that, they want the older wine because it, it tastes better if it gets older, amen? So they, they would bring out the best wine first, and then when everybody was drunk out of their gourds, and couldn't taste anything and didn't know no different, then they bring out the junk cheap wine, amen. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying here. He says, you know, or in, in, in this text, he says, you know, you, you normally you bring out the good wine first, and then when everybody's trashed out of their minds, then you bring out the junk wine, and they don't know no different, amen. They don't know no different. But we see here that Jesus had some level of authority at this wedding, right? Because it says that she, she had authority over these slaves, so she... There's probably some notion there that there was Mary had some relation to the people that was at this wedding. But it says that there's pots of stone. Up, uh, excuse me, there's pots of stone. In verse 6, I'm going to read it again. It says, there were six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Firkins, that's, that's, that's about 20 to 30 gallons of water each one. So that's, you know, six times three, that's, that's 180 gallons. These are big, big pots big pots but you know you know traditionally water pots were made of clay and you can even see that in the scriptures where it talks about how you know God we are just like clay and God molds us so in, in a you know but before and when, when when this really changed amen is when the Roman Empire come in how many know that you know the Roman Empire was very powerful it was very influential and it, it had technology and it had tools that they didn't have in Palestine at the time and uh, before the Romans come, all the pots were clay. And after the Romans left, all the pots were clay. So when an archaeologist goes and digs in Israel and he finds stone pots, he knows exactly when that period was. Amen. It was that period when the Romans come in and occupied Israel. They know that. Amen. But at that time, Rome, when, remember when Jesus was born and when Jesus was died and his whole life, Rome was ruler over, over Palestine, wasn't it? It was over Israel. Amen. And if you if you if you study the archaeology of this, Cana was at the center of this pot making. They had the mines where they mined the rock that they made these pots of was right there, and, and all the factories where they produced these pots was right there in Cana. Amen. It was right there in Cana. You know, and, and uh, in, in the in the mind of the Jewish people, the stone pots were superior. Amen. They were superior uh, for 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 various reasons. One. They believe that stone pots couldn't be made unclean. Now, if you understand the, the Jewish people, they, they were very, they had, a, and a lot of it comes from the scriptures, they had a lot of things about things being unclean or clean. And a pot, if, if it become, a pot, if it become unclean, like a clay pot, what did they do? They had to take it out, they'd smash it, and they would bury it. And it couldn't be used no more. But a stone pot, they, they, they believed that it could not be made unclean because it was made of stone. So, you know, it, was, it, it had some advantages over the clay pots, amen. But uh, Israel, or the, the technology to make these pots come in from uh, Rome, and it was, they had like a lathe, they put these big chunks of rocks on a lathe, 
and spin it round and round. And they had a special tool that they could cut the inside of the pot out with. And then uh, the, the rock that they made these pots out of was like a chalky limestone. It was uh, like a soft, very soft limestone. And they could take chisels and chisel the outside of the block into the shape of a pot. So when you find these, you've seen pictures of them, you can see the chisel marks on the outside of these pots where they've been shaped. I mean, almost like you take a wood gouge and, you know, and, and uh, shave wood off. Well, they did this with metal chisels. It was soft enough that they could do that. It's kind of interesting. And they made wash tubs for washing your feet. Amen. Because how many know that was really important in the Jewish time that you wash your feet? Uh, they, they made boxes, you know, at the time. Uh, burial spaces were, were very, very minimal and hard to come by, so they put a body in there, and when it rotted down the bones, they take the bones out, and they put them in a box. And then they refill that grave again, and you see it over and over again. So they had big boxes made out of, carved out of this stone, and they'd have the family's bones who just keep collecting in these boxes. And that would free up the grave for the next person to die, amen. But there's also, you can go to Israel, and you can see there's a big bathtub that the Roman commander of Palestine had commissioned and made, and it's still in existence. It made out of this same kind of, of stone, amen, and he had a big bath. Kind of interesting. But there, there, there's some other interesting things about Cana. Cana, there was a temple at Cana, okay, a temple at Cana. And does anybody know what the difference between a temple and uh, a synagogue is? A temple and a synagogue? Because you see both terms, right? There's really no difference. The synagogue is just the Greek word for a temple. And in modern times, most Jewish people, if you say the temple, they're going to think of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Amen. But the local place where they worship is the synagogue. That's their synagogue. They call it their synagogue. But the temple at Cana, it was, it was unique in one way. It was unique because right next to that temple was the house of the high priest, Caliphus. Caliphus was the high priest at the time. And if you trace back Caliphus' history in the scriptures... His genealogy, you trace back Jesus, 28 generations back, Caliphus and Jesus are, are blood relation. And he lived right there in Canaan. Almost surely, Caliphus was at this wedding. Amen. He was there. You know, anybody that could breathe or walk in a community went to a wedding. That's just, that's just how it was in Israel and in, in Jewish tradition. In some way, it still is that way. But they made these pots. What were these pots made for? These great big pots, right? They had, they really had two practical or had two 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 reasons for these pots. One was a practical use, amen. Your feet was filthy, your hands were filthy. You needed clean water to wash them, right, for sanitation, to keep yourself from getting sick, right? Two was a ceremonial. You know, ceremonial washings were very part a very important part of the Old Testament of the Torah, right? And uh, so, if if there were sins committed, certain sins or certain things that were done, you had to wash. And that washing was symbolizing as taking the sin away, amen. And the Bible describes it as clearing their conscience, amen. They would wash, and whatever sin they committed, their conscience would be clear. It didn't necessarily really take their sin away, but it cleared the person's conscience, if it makes that make sense, amen. Uh, you know, and that was done in one of two ways. They, they, they would have a baptism, like we would think of a baptism, fully immersion, water, and back up. And uh, in, in the scriptures, you can see at least five examples of that, amen, uh, where they would do that. And then one example is before they got married, they would, they would have baptism. They baptized people in, the, in, the, in, the, in Jesus' time for many, many, lots of different reasons that we don't, that we don't even imagine here in our, in our modern time. But during, before marriage is one time that people would be baptized. And the second, the second one was like where they'd use hand washing. And uh, you can find at least 17 reasons in the scripture and then why they would wash their hands. Um, some examples would be after touching a, bo a, a dead body, or if they committed any sin, like say they got in a fight and with somebody and they had blood on their hand from the person they were fighting with, they'd wash their hands, okay? And it, it not only physically clean their hands, but it was a symbolic way, amen, of taking that sin that they'd committed away, amen? But you know, where, where it, before this miracle here, where was Jesus? Where was Jesus? You know, really, this was really the beginning of his ministry. He went to John the Baptist, his cousin, right, and he was baptized. Then he went into the wilderness, and he was tempted for 30 days, right? And then it says in Luke that right after that, he went back to his parents' house in Nazareth. So that's where we are now. He's just been baptized. He's went through the wilderness, through the temptation. Now he's filled with the Holy Ghost and empowered, and now he goes back to uh, his parents' house, and now he's at this wedding. Amen. 
and that's and that's where we're at now. You know, if you look at the book of John, the, all the miracles and all the readings in John, the theme in John is you see water. It always involves water. Amen. You have the the people that they were blind, and he said, you know, go wash in the pool and put the water on there, and you'll see. Amen. You had the woman at the well that was drawing water. Amen. Everything in John centers around water, and this miracle is no different. It centers around water. But it says here in verse six that there were six water pots. You know, and I've seen probably a thousand different ways that this text has been preached, amen. And I think mine might be just a little bit different. But bear with me, amen. So these six water pots, you can say that six is the man. We know by scripture six is the number of man, right? It represents man. And what are these pots filled with? These pots are filled with water, ain't they? And what what is man in the flesh? What are we mostly? We are mostly water, ain't they? So to me, when I read this, I see that these pots represent a, a men or man. Amen. They represent man. But, you know, it, like I said, it, before uh, the Romans come and after the Romans come, it was always clay pots. But during this period here, when Jesus was here on, on the earth, it was stone pots. Amen. It was stone pots. And I think the stone spots, it speaks to a better way. Amen. It speaks to a better covenant. Why? Because they thought that the stone pots would stay clean. They couldn't be made unclean. You know, Jesus comes into this into the picture of this here, and he speaks over these stones, don't he? He says, you know, fill them with water. You could say he's prophesying over these over these pots. What's he doing? He's, he's creating a new vessel, amen? You could say that the clay speaks to the old covenant, amen, and the stone speaks to the new covenant, amen? It's brought about by Jesus. So they fill these vats to overflowing, it says, don't they? They fill them to overflowing. And what comes out? Wine. Not just any wine, amen? But the very best, amen. They, he saved the very best for last, didn't he? Which seems peculiar, amen. You know, and, and in the Old Testament, the clay pots they were they were a shadow of the of the things to come, if you could say it was a what was coming, amen. What was coming was a new vessel, amen, a new vessel, a stone vessel, a pure vessel, and it was not just filled with water, amen, but it was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because remember, in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost didn't work the same way as it did in the New Testament, amen. They weren't filled with the Holy Ghost like we did. They long to have that kind of anointing that we have. We actually have a better anointing today than what they did in the Old Testament. And we know that that, you know, that washing, that symbolic there, all it could do was appease their conscience. Amen. It really couldn't deliver them from their sin. Amen. But with that wine, and when Jesus prophesied over that bottles, and that and that water becomes wine. Amen. It speaks of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It speaks of the blood of the covenant of Jesus, don't it? Amen. And I, and I mentioned they they long for that. Our, the patriarchs of old. You know, they, 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 they waited and waited and waited for that promise of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And many of them died and went to their graves and never seen it, did they? But we have a new and a better covenant, amen? And we're not just filled with water, but we're filled with the wine and the blood of Jesus, amen, you could say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tonight, church, are we clay pots or are we stone pots, amen? Clay pots or stone pots? You know, stone pots speak of a better covenant. They speak of a covenant with Jesus, amen? They speak of an infilling of the Holy Ghost in our lives, amen? And Jesus wants to make us stone pots, don't he? Amen. He wants us to fill us to the top with the wine of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He wants us to walk in the new covenant. He wants us to give us the best. He saved the best to last. Can you imagine that? All the patriarchs through all the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Jesus saved the best wine to last. He saved the best Holy Ghost, the best anointing for us. Amen. After his death. The best wine is the oldest, isn't it? Amen. It's the oldest. Jesus prepared that best wine, and he'd been aging it, he's been keeping it for all them centuries for us. He filled it, and he, and he what does he say? He, pour, you know, he gives us the anointing, and he wants us to pour it back out, just like they did. He made that wine, and then they dipped it out and used it and gave it to others, didn't they? Amen. What does the scripture say? Freely we've been given. Amen. Freely we should give. You know, the world is waiting for that wine, amen, that, that, that Jesus has put into us as, as, as stone pots, Amen. Amen. They're looking, they're a lost world, they're a lost generation, they're looking for that anointing that Jesus has given to us. And, you know, there, there are several reasons, I think, that we see this, this uh, miracle of water into wine here. And one, one reason, the one thing that we see in there is that Jesus provides all that we need, amen, all we have to ask, and he'll provide it, amen. And two is that we, we don't, we, we shouldn't focus on the wine, amen, as a church, we want to focus on the on the, the anointing. We want to focus on the movements of the anointing, amen. 
But really, we should focus on the winemaker. Who's the winemaker? Amen. Focus on Jesus. If we focus on the winemaker, the wine will flow. Amen. Yeah, another way we can say that we should believe the, the not only believe the message, but we should believe in the messenger. Amen. Don't believe just in the miracle, but believe in the miracle maker. And who is that? That's Jesus. Amen. That's amen. Jesus. Are we stone pots or clay pots, church? Amen. Because, you know, we have the choice to, to, to be whatever we want to. We can allow the Holy Ghost to fill us, amen, and to, and to change us and mold us and shape us, amen. And we can be a stone vessel, amen, that's purified, amen, that can't be contaminated, amen, and that is full of wine, amen, and that is brought out into the world. Or we can be a clay pot, amen. We can be a clay pot that's full of what? Dirty water, amen. But Christ wants to make us stone pots, amen. He wants to fill us with the wine of the Spirit, amen. He saved that best for us, amen. He saved the best for last, amen. All we have to do is believe, accept it, and receive it, amen. We have better wine. Why? Because we've been spoken over by the Master, amen. You realize that when we're saved, amen, we, 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 become, we become that stone pot. Jesus speaks over us, don't he, amen. He speaks over us, and we become a better vessel, amen, to speak into a dying world. Stone pots or clay pots, amen. You know, uh, stone is made pure, but clay is easily made unclean. If you read the scriptures, it was easy to take clay pots and make them unclean. There was a myriad of ways that the stone, that clay could be unclean in the scriptures. But Jesus wants to make us stone pots. Amen. Water that can be made unclean or wine for the healing of the nations. Amen is another way the scripture might say it. Filled overflowing. The gospel is, you know, it... You know, it's a, you see the gospel here, I believe, in this in this chapter in two kinds of pots, amen. You see stone pots and you see clay pots. And in the two pots, you see the whole gospel story written right there, amen. And I'd say tonight, Lord, make me a vessel of stone and fill me with wine, amen, that I can pour, pour that wine out to the nation, amen, to the people that need it, amen. All right, that was a short, a little short one tonight, amen. But, uh... I like, I love that miracle, I mean, it was only, you know, that miracle is only in, in John, and that's it. You know, a lot of miracles you have in, in different, you have different uh, versions in the different Gospels. But that one is just in John. And uh, th there's been many, many different ways that, that that has been presented, and many different, I mean, you, know, you can, you can really dig deep into the scriptures, and you can really find a lot of, a lot in there, can't you? Amen. And it seems like, you know, when the uh, the Lord has always shown you something new, at least what seems new to you anyways, or seems new to me, amen, it's not new, amen, it's been known, we just, it's just not been known to us, or known to me, amen, or known to you. But that revelation is there, and all we have to do is open it up and look, don't we? All we have to do is open it up, and God will reveal it to you. Amen. All right, I'm going to sing one, church. I'm going to sing one. What you song, I'll sing a song, all right? Thank you for helping me learn that, buddy. I think I'm going to sing one. I'm going to sing a medley. A medley, which is which is two or three songs combined, so you might be completely done with me by the time I get singing this medley, Harley. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Amen. Amen. And I know you know all these songs, so if you want to sing with me, go ahead. Well, walk around. Walk around, walk around, Jesus. Walk around, walk around, Jesus. Walk around, walk around, my bedside, Walk around, walk around, my bedside, When I Yeah. Uh -huh. 
church uh if no one needs prayer zane will be back saturday i'm sure amen his wife had a medical appointment tonight so amen be with him in your prayers and barb you have any announcements <laughs> it's not saturday no no there's no there's no sunday school in the morning i'm with saying one Mm-hmm. <laughs>